we are literally going backwards where food is now considered a luxury the most expensive supermarket in america air one potatoes one of the cheapest carb sources on the planet 25 25 dollars buy by nachos for a dollar when you can go to air one and make them yourself at home for a thousand let's go shopping let's see what a thousand dollars gets me at air one and yes they have valet parking in a private elevator we spent a hundred dollars on air one smoothies guess the price of these pomegranates 34 dollars orange juice for 20 dollars 23 dollars yogurt so what screams excess wealth more than having food and it is now just tablescape for your parties this is what we're doing when most people can't afford food i think this is just like a place for rich people so they don't have to hang around like poor people hello i'm salem welcome to my chanel i would never pay six dollars for an orange i would pay five dollars for a taco bell box though can you say hi can you Thank you for that. Hello everybody, it is me, Sam, and welcome back to my Chanel. In bed with me edition. I wanted to go for more comfy vibes or whatever. I feel like this fits my comfy ASMR vibes type of commentary that I do. I hope you guys are feeling good. I hope y'all ain't struggling, even though I know not only is the struggle real, it's also incredibly common nowadays. Tell me why I went to the grocery store today and I ended up paying like $12 for eggs. Are things getting more expensive or is it that companies are getting more greedy? The answer is yes to all of that. It used to be that we could spend a lot of money on like, you know, the nice bougie eggs. You know, the ones that are like green and yellow, range free, spa massaged, pre-blessed, fancy chickens, you know? But now the crappy eggs are also just as expensive. So if you're noticing, wow, why is it that I'm paying so much money for such horrible quality? You're not crazy. You know the whole Dorito chip effect where you buy a bag of chips and half of it is, you know, chips and then half of it is just gaslighting. If you were under the impression that that was just a manufacturing mistake um no that's actually on purpose in fact the whole dorito chip effect is not only happening to chips but it's also happening to tubes of toothpaste dog food shampoo the reason why this is happening is because of something called shrinkflation girl let me get my phone out because you know i don't know all of these sat words in economics shrinkflation also known as package downsizing is the process of items shrinking in size or quantity so that the product becomes more affordable to the consumer however this is not what's happening whatsoever we're seeing a decrease in the size of products but an increase in the pricing and this is skimpflation which then turns into green Greedflation. And unfortunately, the brands who are directly causing this greedflation, their responses have basically been LMAO, just eat Kellogg's for dinner if you're struggling that hard to buy groceries. By the way, I'm not lying about that response. That's an actual real response that happened from the Kellogg's CEO. I want real food for dinner. I don't want Kellogg's with what? Valentina and Limon and then Target wants to do a subscription service for self-checkout and then there are places like Erwan where a tiny slice of pie is $42 but Hailey Bieber and influencers shop there all the time to brag about how they can afford it on TikTok and how much that makes them better than us which unfortunately feeds into the cycle of making millionaires and these greedy companies feel like it's okay to keep price gouging you know what's more embarrassing that our government cares more about banning TikTok than doing something about this <sighs> we're doomed <laughs> but maybe we're not doomed because i'm here to save the world so get into some pjs relax get into bed with me grab some tea and let's get into it before we get into the world of shrinkflation and how companies are so greedy um here's a word from our sponsors having an online shop or online business is a lot of work but that work doesn't have to be hard especially if you're the one who owns it and thankfully shopify is here to help you to get into a global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business from the idea stage to the launcher online shop stage to even the first real life store stage all the way to the did we just hit a million dollars stage shopify is here to grow alongside you whether you're selling crocheted hats, scented soaps, care boxes, BTS keychains, literally whatever, Shopify helps you sell your item everywhere. What I love about Shopify is no matter how small you start, Shopify gives you literally every single tool to take your business to whatever level you want. Businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. And you can start your own online business now for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash salemtovar. Go to shopify.com slash salemtovar now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in shopify.com slash sam tovar 
I tend to be very forgetful, and if you're anything like me, there are a lot of subscriptions that you have forgotten about. In fact, did you know nearly 75% of people have subscriptions they've completely forgotten about? But thankfully, with Rocket Money, all that's in the past. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions for you and monitors your spending. With Rocket Money, I have a very clear view of all my expenses. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. Personally, my favorite feature is Rocket Money's custom budget feature, which is super convenient because Rocket Money literally notifies me whenever there is an increase in a subscription. Like, Rocket Money really do be having my back. And they can have your back too, so stop wasting money on things you don't even use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash salemtovar. That's rocketmoney.com slash salemtovar. rocketmoney.com slash salemtovar. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions today. Part one, shrinkflation. We are being scammed out here for real. We are paying so much for literally so little. So I have kind of already touched on the fact that shrinkflation is kind of a company's way of basically robbing us. Shrinkflation is the reduction of a product in size with the aim of reducing its product cost instead of raising the prices. However, that's not what's happening. One of the most popular examples of shrinkflation was the Toblerone, AKA the worst chocolate ever invented. I'm so sorry. It tastes like chocolatey cement to me. When Mondelez changed the design of the Toblerone by spacing the gaps between each triangle chocolatey Thing, thereby reducing the weight of the Toblerone, but didn't change the size of the package to make it seem like customers were gonna buy the same amount of the regular Toblerone, only to open it and find out why I look like my granddad's teeth. Skimpflation and shrinkflation tend to happen during very inflationary times. Obviously the panini happened and the demand of product skyrocketed because people were literally buying truckloads of Charmin as if it was the end of the world. And because of that, prices also went up. So basically, in attempts to save money and in attempts to save our money, a lot of these companies assume, okay, we'll give customers less of this product so that it's cheaper. And we've seen this with a couple of items where they are tinier or they are smaller in quantity. Not only remaining the same price, they're actually getting more expensive. This is just straight up something called greedflation. Y'all heard of the Grinch stole Christmas? Well, how about the Grinch stole my whole damn savings account? That's not considered a necessity to a lot of these greedy corporations, unfortunately. They just assume that we're these robots who just don't need food or sleep or shampoo or anything because that's just us being greedy as consumers because these brands and these ceos and millionaires are genuinely convinced that we just don't need that much in fact if we truly wanted to save money we would just eat cereal for dinner the ceo of kellogg's gary pilnick suggested customers eat cereal for dinner as a solution for struggling families affected by food inflation who knew tony the tiger was such capitalist scum pilnick stated the cereal category has always been quite affordable and it tends to be a great destination when consumers are under pressure. If you think about the cost of cereal for a family versus what they might otherwise do, that's going to be much more affordable. Sir, I am not going to eat Lucky Charms for dinner. Sometimes, maybe. Of course he isn't wrong, but there's no nutritional value in that. Do you genuinely think that Pop-Tarts is a good substitute for actual food. It's honestly just really sad how the system is so rigged against poor people. Society wants them to suffer and basically not be healthy and thrive. And definitely hoes like Tony the Tiger are contributing to that. And even the affordable part of that is a straight up lie because Kellogg's products literally went up by 17.1% in October, which was actually considered the highest increase out of all cereal brands. This has led to a call for boycotting Kellogg's and you know what thankfully some of the boycotts have actually been working. Toblerone went back to their original design and even in some places Kellogg's cereal
oil went back to 99 cents which is honestly really cool to see that when people gather together they can really make a cost-effective difference and put these brands and greedy ceos back into reality i feel like a big reason as to why greedflation and shrinkflation skimpflation your momflation is happening a lot nowadays is a lot of it has to do with complacency as well obviously many many of us are backed into a corner where we kind of have no choice but to either starve or kind of be like well there's not much i can do i'm just gonna have to buy it however i feel like a lot of people aren't talking about the third thing whenever there is someone doing good in the universe trying to make a difference there is a greedy influencer out there who just bought a thousand dollars worth of groceries for tiktok setting us all a million steps backwards they need their ten dollar orange from erwan Part 2 Influencers are buying $65 slices of pie just because Hailey Bieber shops at the same grocery store. <sighs> I have no idea how this place exists. If you guys don't know what Erewhon is, hopefully you never do. And if you do know what it is and if you shop there, click off. You're not welcome here. Anyone who is willing to pay $45 for salad, there's something wrong with you. When I think of skimpflation, greedflation, and all of those things, the number one thing that comes to my mind is this place, Erwan, which is located in LA, which is not surprising whatsoever because everything bad happens there. Wanna know how LA this is? This damn grocery store got its own page in Vogue. Can a meteor just please wipe us out? This is because Erwan is directly connected to celebrity influencer culture. Yes, a grocery store. The trendy food destination was born as a health-focused organic grocery store during the 1960s, but Erewhon's current form only took shape during the last decade, since new ownership took over in 2011. The grocer has expanded across the wealthiest LA enclaves, transforming from granola to glam and cultivating a fandom that includes big name actors and influencers. Usually when it comes to places excluding poor, gross, ugly people, you know, only being opened to rich, pretty people would usually be okay in society if it was like a purse store or a clothing store they exist everywhere however this is now extending to food something that we need a necessity you need food to survive you can't eat a birkin so because of the lavish lifestyle associated with erwan the prices are literally insane to the point where i don't understand how it's not illegal roasted cauliflower can easily run up to 20 dollars a pound and this is all over TikTok, not only as people are criticizing the prices. Today, we're going to be guessing the price of groceries at the most expensive supermarket in America, Air One. Potatoes, one of the cheapest carb sources on the planet. $25? $25? But some people are just showing off the fact that they can shop there, and that makes them better than you. I just had the most fun I've ever had at a grocery store, so let me give you guys a haul, because this store is awesome there is something really weird going on in the world where showing off wealth is no longer new shoes or a new car we are literally going backwards where food is now considered a luxury what is this the 1800s there is a tiktoker by the name of k festeria don't know how to say that she made a tiktok that kind of touches on this topic specifically the kardashians and how wasteful they are with food simply just to look luxurious and this is a bouquet of flowers that she either received or ordered and they literally have oranges in it cut up oranges and so this is obviously not being eaten in any way shape or form it is a bouquet that is sitting out on a table for show there's something so dystopian about that like even just talking about it makes my tummy drop like it kind of makes me want to cry oh my god am i gonna cry stop no i'm not um because you know who should be crying these influencers who don't understand that they too are also being exploited there is literally no difference between an affordable organic store and erwan as they both provide healthy foods literally the only difference is that erwan offers you status status is literally not real it can be sold and attached to anything it reminds me of that one social experiment that went viral a long time ago of the fake high-end shoe store yes invited to check out what looked like a luxury shoe shop a 35 dollar shoe going for 645 dollars an 1800 percent markup store owners sat on their heels as fashion influencers emptied their wallets these are actually from payless 
You've got to be kidding me. As long as a company can sell you the narrative that something will make you stand out from the normies, then you'll always have an audience of people who are looking for status. People who shop at Erwan are not only trying to convey the message that, hey, look at me, I can shop somewhere that gives me status, but I can also afford health. You know, health and wealth historically are so deeply intertwined. Health in itself is a luxury. And what's crazy is that companies are making it so that to be healthy, you have to pay more. Even before the whole inflation thing that is happening right now, organic food and healthy options in general have always been expensive. Why do we have to pay to live well? Now it's becoming a glamorized product to the point where only super elite famous people are going to have access to. And in order to make it accessible to the people who aren't elite, companies and CEOs start to cut corners. But unfortunately for the lower class, that means that they get less product, less quality product. This is why in poorer neighborhoods, you tend to see food that is worse for your health. These foods have a lot more chemicals and dyes. What's even more ironic is the Kellogg CEO who said to just eat Kellogg's for dinner if you're struggling from rising grocery prices. Kellogg's recently got exposed for having trace amounts of weed killer in their cereals, so that did not age well. And unfortunately, it's not just food that's being affected by the lessening of good quality, guaranteed safety, and health. If you guys will remember, recently there was a viral TikTok of an Alaskan airline flight whose door just completely went away in portland oregon which fun fact <laughs> i live like five minutes away from there whenever something bad happens i just assume that it's gonna be somewhere um in washington because it just seems like this land is cursed i want to move the only thing that's cool about living here is that twilight was filmed here i love that for me the culprit of this happening was a boeing 737 plane it has been cleared that this was not the fault of some sort of weird happenstance it wasn't a freak accident it wasn't like a wizard who disguised himself as a normal passenger who did some magic on the bolts you know it wasn't that even though that would be pretty cool it was a result of a systemic problem specifically cutting corners and making cheaper material to make airplanes. The Boeing spokesperson Connor Greenwood says, we are squarely focused on taking significant demonstrated action with transparency at every turn. With the next turn, the plane's gonna fall apart. There is no turns. They really do be fixing up these planes with duct tape. You don't wanna die? Um, entitled, sorry. I don't make the rules. Girl, you know it's bad when Spirit Airlines is safer. Jokes aside, I'm a little worried because I am going to actually be in Florida by the time that this video is posted. Hopefully I landed safely because I'm actually going to be on a Boeing airplane. Um, I'm actually looking into it with my family to possibly change that because I'm not willing to take any risks. When I looked into it, it'll cost $500 to switch planes. I'm paying more money to be safe. Um, even though it should be safe in the first place. And this is what I hate about what's going on in the world today. Safety, health, being able to save money should all be basic human rights, yet they're not. Final part, we still have some power. Also, I love cows, so here are some cows. I don't wanna make anyone paranoid or make anyone feel discouraged or make anyone feel even more hopeless than what they were feeling when they first clicked on this video. That is never my intention. But I did want to make this video because it is a very real issue. Thankfully, there are a couple of solutions to these problems. First and foremost, um, stop being complacent and stop shopping at places like Erwan. $12,000 grocery haul, guys. <laughs> I understand you want to show everyone that you're fancy and you're rich and you're luxurious. I get it. But bestie, what you don't realize is that it is directly feeding the monster that we're all trying to kill. Pretty soon, they are going to come out with Air One Plus Deluxe, the third. And they can price gouge all they want and no one will question it simply because of the status associated with it. The more that we keep enabling these brands and these companies and these CEOs to keep being greedy, then who knows how bad things will get. And things are already pretty bad. If a company like Air One feels 
comfortable enough to have the audacity to charge $60 for a small food item. And if there's people who are complacent in it, then who knows how far the pricing will go. And trust me, they will push it and they will push it. Because as long as there are people going to their stores, then that shows them that that is what people want. And pretty soon, other stores will follow in their footsteps. Finding ways to make us spend more, finding ways to get us on more subscriptions, and trying to find more ways that charges us for our most basic human bare minimum necessities. But it will not get that bad if we just don't stay complacent, if we call it out, and if we go with other brands who aren't doing these things. So we carry a lot of power as consumers and we need to use that power wisely. And more specifically, we need to spend that power wisely, literally spend it wisely. I will never understand the notion of, ah, but I feel poor going to Walmart. There's no shame in trying to save money and trying to survive, especially right now when everything is like ridiculously expensive. There will never be any shame, ever any shame in being smart with your money. What's more shameful, buying 99 cent toothpaste that's off brand or being Jason Nash because that's what a lot of y'all influencers are gonna end up being like if y'all don't stop shopping at Air One. Guys, what's up? My name's Jason Nash and this is my submission to Live Fest. I'm here at TikTok Live and I'll be on there every day in December. Obviously, the majority of it falls squarely on the shoulders of brands and companies. If they are going to shrink the product inside the package, then shrink the package too because I think I can say this for everyone. We're getting pretty tired of buying stuff that looks like there's a lot of stuff in it and then we open it and apparently we bought air companies really do be out here like oh hair from the lorax it's not fair that is my slogan for 2024 vote me for president because um i mean just look there are no other options you might as well vote me there also needs to be regulations on these things apparently there has been some stores that charge you extra for using self-checkout and that is not considered illegal and it's crazy so be careful doing self-checkout if only our government gave the amount of energy they have to ban tiktok to solve real problems such as these but instead they're busy doing this Mr. Chu, does TikTok access the home Wi-Fi network? Only if the user turns on the Wi-Fi. I, I'm sorry. Wealth, status, consumerism, shrinkflation, the Kardashians using oranges, real oranges as decorations, are deeply intertwined. And this is a very bad sign because these characteristics should not be tied to basic human necessities. We shouldn't have to pay more for health. We shouldn't have to pay more for the opportunity to live well. We shouldn't have to pay more to be safe and we shouldn't have to pay more for stuff that isn't even good quality i know that this seems like such an impossible scary huge topic to tackle but it sounds really cheesy and basic and we hear it all the time but it still rings true with small steps, we all can make a difference. Small actions can lead to meaningful change. Because if we don't stop playing, we're going to be right back to the 1800s where food was only reserved for the wealthy and the well-off. And all I can say is that is also going to affect the influencers who pretend to be rich. It'll affect all of us one day if this keeps getting worse. And we all about to be like Oliver Twist with the please sir, can I have some more to the elites. And I ain't trying to do all of that. So let's definitely work together to make a change, y'all. And let's put these brands in a pressure cooker instead of mary antoinette saying let them eat cake these brands are out here saying let them eat some kellogg's all right guys that is it for today's video thank you guys so much for watching if you made it to the very end of the video make sure you comment down a duck emoji down below so i know that you watched the entire thing that is my love language that is our language remember to like and subscribe to my youtube channel so you can get more content like this and click the notification bell so you know exactly whenever i upload and you can be first to comment and i can be first to heart it Comment down below what your opinion is on shrinkflation, greedflation, what companies can do, how influencers are dumb um, for shopping at Erwan. Let me know what your thoughts are. Before I end this video, make sure to follow me on Instagram. My handle is at underscore Salem Tovar underscore. I also have a podcast, so go ahead and check that out. It's actually everywhere. It's super easy to find. The name is the Salem Tovar podcast. I know, so creative. You can find me on Apple Music, Spotify, anywhere. Go ahead and give me five stars. I would really appreciate it. As well on TikTok at Salem Tovar. And honestly, that is it for today's video. Before I go, I just want you guys to have a nice day. Take a nap. Relax. <laughs> Do something that requires zero effort. <laughs> 
And honestly, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.